All right, in this lecture series, we talked about how shorelines form by eroding the continental rock, by depositing that erosion into beaches, how beaches also get eroded. We also talked about rivers and their role in depositing things, longshore currents and other types of wave generator currents in order to deposit materials in the beach as well. And we also talked about living shorelines. Now, let's put this all together and talk about the different kinds of shoreline which you can experience uh, in the continents. Now, there are two main kinds of shorelines. The first one are called the primary or terrestrial shorelines, or shorelines caused by terrestrial reasons. So, for example, the most common type of terrestrial shoreline is actually the stream erosion shoreline. So you can see here, for example, on the top left side, that this area right there got eroded by something. It seems to be cut by something. But this is not typically something that would happen because of a wave. This happens because streams are running through and causing erosion pattern of this area. So this is called stream erosion shoreline. shoreline. Uh, the opposite of it is that if that stream is coming through and carrying, uh, depositing uh, actually sediments, you get what is called a deltaic or a delta sh shoreline or a stream deposition shoreline when you actually have the, the, the uh, shoreline be extended because of deposition. And remember that I showed you a picture of, of how this looks like because of the Nile River that it's actually extended the shoreline of, of, of North Africa because of it. Uh, another one is called the glacial erosion shoreline. And that's basically when glaci glaciers, just like streams do, actually cut through the shoreline, creating these canals, which were basically the canals that the ice used to get through the ocean. And so you get uh, rivers of ice cutting through the land. And just like you have stream deposition, you also have glacial deposition. But I do not have a picture of that here. But it's something very similar. All right? Uh, but notice that the biggest difference between the glacial erosion and the stream erosion is that glacial erosion will typically make a lot of canals, while stream erosion will typically make less of those canals. But we did see pictures on our, 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 our how the continental shelf looks when it's eroded and it has all these canals. So it's all similar, stream versus glaciers. The only difference is that glaciers is, is frozen rivers of ice that come with a lot more power, but a lot more slowly too. Okay, now another one is called... Uh, wave erosion shorelines, and we learn about these. These are the ones that uh, form those wave cut notches, those platforms, those cliffs, and you can see that here, the wave erosion shoreline on the top right corner. Then you also have marine deposition shorelines, and we talked about those as well. The idea that uh, sometimes you're going to get longshore currents making things like barrier islands, lagoons, and sand spits, and things like that. And then you also have organic shorelines like the coral reef. And we did talk about all of these, right? We talked about how rivers erode the land. We talked about how rivers deposit sediments. We talked about glaciers can do the same. We talked about marine erosion and marine deposition. We also talked about coral reefs. So now you have a general picture about how different shorelines can look depending on what kind of setup is happening. But remember that sometimes a combination of these things will happen. For example, the same place that's actually seeing stream erosion uh, can also see stream deposition in other areas. And a change in the pattern of the river can actually change the whole pattern. It's what we call inlet erosion. When something that used to be deposited is now being eroded by the water. We talked about that in another video. Uh, the same thing with the glacial erosion shorelines. Surely the glaciers are eroding the shoreline, but at the same time, waves can be doing their job in creating platforms and cliffs and things like that as well. And why not? You can maybe have a core, not, not with the same place as a glacier, but you could have a coral reef close to where you have uh, marine erosion shoreline and things like that. And so, but remember that why would you not expect to see a marine erosion shoreline, shoreline usually right below a coral reef? Well, because the coral reef is blocking most of the waves. And so you're not going to have marine erosion shorelines. And since it's blocking more of the waves, you're not going to have a lot of deposition. You're not going to have a lot of longshore currents and therefore not deposition shorelines. So typically, you will tend to see one of these types in one specific area depending on the conditions of the area. But there is a chance that some of them can be together at the same point. But you might not see uh, glacier shorelines with the coral reefs because coral reefs need to be tropical. You might not see marine erosion with coral reefs because coral reefs will be blocking the waves and so forth. And so you, you have these different kinds of things. But for example, Florida does have coral reefs, barrier islands. But we also see some uh, 
marine deposition shoreline formations because the coral reefs do not completely block the wave motions and so that's what you get by the way the reason why florida is such has seen such slow waves is because it has the barrier islands and because it has the uh very very steady incline because the way the, the beach is being eroded and so since it has that erosion uh, shoreline with a very inclined beach we talked about this the waves are usually sliding or slipping uh, breakers which don't usually generate a lot of uh, power and therefore there's not a lot of uh, wave motion in those in florida but this will be completely different for a different place right and so these are different different types of shorelines now you see here a different picture of exactly the same thing you see a bare island coast which can form either by longshore deposition or by coral reef formations. You saw, you see here the fjord coast, which is usually associated with glaciers. We saw that that those cuts that glaciers will actually make. You see the delta coast, which is usually associated with river deposition, right? You see a fault coast, which is usually associated with wave erosion and breakage because because of tectonic plate motion. So we associate both things. We didn't even talk about that. Tectonic plates can also carve the rocks of the shoreline. That's a whole different topic. We'll talk about it in the next next uh, video. Uh, you see here a Rhea coast, which is a, basically a stream erosion shoreline. And a lot of early continents look like that. Uh, a volcanic coast, which is basically uh, a coast made of a lot of volcanic islands all strung together. You also have coral reefs coasts, like a bare, bare islands and fringe reefs and not atolls and things like that. So there are lots of different kinds of coasts out there. All right? And that's it. Now, from here, we have completed our, 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 our chapter on, on shoreline formation. And I hope that you're ready for the quiz, and that I hope that this was helpful. Don't do anything that wouldn't make you more proud.